Hello and welcome back. This is Kisma and we are on video 5, our final video for the Sacred Landscapes. By this time you've painted your Sacred Landscape and you have incorporated into it your Sacred Stone Circles, whether by directly painting your Stone Circle Karn into your landscape or taking your 6x6 um, painting and cutting it out and then gelling it in place. Either way is perfectly your choice. And now we're moving into the fine details of it. And also in this video, I'm going to show you or, or you have three choices uh, for your final uh, landscape to make. The first one, of course, is after you do the details, that's it, you're done. And you're letting the full colors and all um, that you've worked up to that point um, be your final spread. The second one will be a step using white, um, pay, uh, titanium white paint, and then the third one uh, is a varnish. So let's take a look at them, but first let's finish your actual landscape with the details. Here are your supplies again. I've got them all from the last video in this one. Okay, so there you go. You've got your sacred stones into your land and it really looks beautiful. So let's just do a little detailing. We're going to take our uh, charcoal cold Stabilo pencil and we're going to uh, um, just outline different uh, irregularities in the tree trunk to bring them out a little more fully. So just go with what your paint has uh, created for you and outline branches and trunks and uh, once you have it the way you like it then of course you're going to go over it with your agua. I realized I've been saying aqua like the color aqua when it's agua which is water uh, pintail uh, brush pin. So you can see with the branches, all I'm doing is outlining areas that peek out through the leaves. And don't forget, you can use uh, your Stabilo, your graphite, uh, to do some shading. So just spread it around and, and uh, use it that way. And any excess uh, at this point and in this type of detailing can just be blotted away like I'm doing with the paper towel. You know, when we outline things like this, um, it kind of classifies it as illustration because we're doing outlining, whereas when you paint, or as the new buzzword is, the painterly a look is to just let your um, different colors butt up against each other and blend without any uh, real definition like this. So, it's nice to know terminology. I have to tell you though, 
and I don't mean this disrespectfully to anybody, but when I hear uh, anyone say painterly, <laughs> I chuckle. I still chuckle over that one. A painterly look. And now's the time also to do any uh, final detail embellishments to your um, stone circles. So um, it's the same thing, using your Stabilo, your charcoal pen, and just uh, making sure you've got some nice shadows and definition around it. And all these little touches are, are the intuitive aspect of our our creations but we're getting ready now uh, it can either be a done deal for you or we go on to an alternative um, ending but wait oh I forgot we're gonna put words we got to do a little bit of journaling um, I will not forget you. I don't ask me to say the Gaelic, but you can uh, write that around your stone circle. Um, and all I did was took a tissue paper and I first, just to get my hand into the feel of writing it um, around the stones, I wrote it on my tissue paper. Um, that always feels good to do a little practice like that before actually writing onto our, our journal pages. Um, it can be scary for us for some reason uh, to add journaling on top of what we've painted, and yet this is a art journal. Yes, we're journaling our different um, explorations into uh, art, uh, different styles and different tools, but it also involves um, using it for a journal um, to record our emotions even if we paint over those emotions and it's so nice to go ahead and add our thoughts our emotions to the top of the page oh my gosh dog war you may not have even been able to hear that but boy it was loud outside uh, here's something to consider too misspelling of a word which I just did um, you just have to fake it <laughs> just don't point it out don't try to correct it um, because uh, trust me when you try to correct a, a word that you misspell on your journal page you make more of a mess and if somebody uh, notices it and points it out okay good for them they're a wonderful editor yay we love credit critics we love editors we need them in this world so um, we get to applaud them for doing their little job um, now go ahead and add some journaling um, here and there. I use my Poshka white and then also just a, a graphite pencil to add my journals. Once you finish adding some journaling, or maybe you don't want to add any any words on the top, you basically have come to um, the first uh, finish. And um, at this point, you, you would just allow everything to be done. But if you want to continue down the road to the next, uh, to the next option for a finish then we're going to take a look at that next all right there's what it would look like as a finished piece as it so the question is are you done See, I missed an S. Next comes <laughs> finish number two. We're going to use a brayer and some white titan titanium 
uh, and we're going to just go over. Now for this, this is a, a scary for a lot of people to add white um, to the top of a finished page. Um, what the white does in, in many ways is it pull, it, it, it quiets down maybe um, some vibrant colors, yes, but it also kind of pulls things together. Why did I use it? I used it because um, the landscape, the sacred landscape to me is misty and this brought in an element of adding mist to the land letting it be, have that magical element so that I'm not there in broad daylight, but perhaps I'm standing there in the early morning um, or maybe in the evening, but I'm, I'm, I'm there when the land and the other world kind of superimpose. Now once you've added the white that you want, you can see how it already dries very quickly. So if you want to take away any of the white, what you do is you just get basic rubbing alcohol. I put mine in a little spray bottle and you use a cosmetic pad. And then you just go over the areas that you might want to lift up a little bit. Now what alcohol does on our acrylics also is it blends, it makes uh, some of the layers smooth together, merge together, um, and you can take up as much or as little as you want, but um, it adds a nice little touch to it um, when you use this kind of layer. However, alcohol will make your acrylic sticky underneath. And we'll get to that in just a moment, but now with this, you might find or feel that you're finished. This would be uh, finish number two. So are you done? Or are you going to go for the full nine yards? Because now we go to the final finish, which is varnishing. So first, before you can go on, you got to blow that dry. Of course, if you're going to just leave it as it is, you can let it dry naturally. The alcohol will dry fairly quick, but to continue forward with varnishing, you want your acrylic and all the sense of stickiness to be completely gone. So dry it using your drying tool and get that page nice and dry. See, it doesn't look so bad with that finish. It's kind of a cool look too. But let's antique it. Let's antique this and make it really seem like it's otherworldly. I'm using uh, a varnish. It's a uh, transparent red oxide and it's a very thick and gooey kind of uh, medium. You definitely don't paint directly with this because it's so clumpy. You need something like a varnish or uh, to thin it out to make it spreadable. So I'm just going to add my, my uh, gloss varnish here and get a bit a little bit more and using a palette knife I'm going to mix it together. It doesn't completely dissolve and blend as you'll see in a minute. The granules in the varnish will stay there. That gives you an idea of just how thick and gooey this varnish is. The whole idea of varnish is that you put it on and you wipe it off and that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to use a cosmetic uh, pad to apply it in small areas and then we're going to wipe it off. So here we go and watch the transformation. I'm going to use a cloth for that first to wipe off with. So you see what starts to happen? All the colors become deepened just by the application of that varnish. You don't want to let it sit on too long because then you won't be able to wipe it off. It will dry fairly quick. So that's why I work in small pieces on and off. If you want an area darker, you just keep reapplying the varnish or you can leave it on. I just added 
a little bit more varnish. It wasn't quite uh, lubricant enough for me. But you know that texturing we put on? This is the reason why. Look at how the varnish catches in those areas and starts to give it kind of a crackled look. For me, this varnish brings it alive. It, it makes the layers really uh, pop, begin to pop out, even though it's blending it all together. It just makes the landscape come alive. And the mist uh, will still remain. It still is there for me. Once you get one page completely varnished, take a clean pad and just wipe over it, and you'll be surprised at how much varnish you still pull off. See? But you're just pulling off the excess varnish at this time. Red oxide. And now we're going to do the other side. And the other side, you don't have to do your stone circles, but I want them all to be the same hue. I don't want the stone circles to stick out that much. I want them to blend with the sacred landscape. Um, and so I'm going to actually go right on over them. I just love how that looks. It really gives it an aged look. Very organic and natural look. And all that white, that ugly texturing that I know in the back of your head you were going, I don't know if I like that. I don't know if I like that. Now you're seeing the real purpose for adding it. And you have to add it early on so it gets under all the layers of paint so that when you come with this last finishing layer, it's there waiting to become merged with the entire photo. Look at that. Look at how beautiful that looks. So I have just a little bit of plain varnish uh, left on my plate so I'm just going to get uh, another cosmetic sponge and get it wet with the varnish and I'm just making a quick uh, swipe over both pages and in the seams just to seal it off and to use up the, the medium. Waste not one. Um, and then again, I'm just going to wipe off the excess. And at this point, you have now come to the final stage of our sacred landscape. I hope you enjoyed this video. And um, I, if you do paint it, I would really love to see your finished, uh, your finish. Come to my Facebook page, um, Studio Inspiration Art Journal, and I also have a private group uh, that you can join um, for, for those of you who are trying out my lessons. See you again. Take care. Bye for now.